Right, shalom, shalom. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jonathan, the Code Searcher. And I got a few codes I want to share with you guys. Um, uh, many of you have been asking about the election and some of the election codes. And you knew that I was holding on to a couple and um, wasn't ready to produce. Uh, and that day has come. And here it is. So uh, I got three to share with you guys. This particular one is election 2024. Um, the other one or the others. Should I, maybe I should keep that a secret. All right. The other two, I'm going to keep a secret until we get to that point. But before we get started, um, you, you guys know we were just days away from the election and, uh, I've, I've had emails. People are concerned about me, concerned about my well-being and, and about my, you know, mental capacity with this election it doesn't look good right for someone i would say this um uh, you know there's there's a there's an illusion that's, that's going on and uh people s seem to think uh that votes matter and things like that there's a famous quote from that movie i, I told you guys about um with tammany hall in it where uh, one of the characters says um, something about the vote and, and Boss Tweed says, excuse me, my nose is tickling me, mustache tickling me. Boss Tweed says, it's not about the vote, it's about who counts the vote, right? And then he says something to the effect of, we count till we win, right? So you guys know what I'm alluding to. Um, this is not the first rodeo. The last time this happened, I was very uh, blunt with you um, and open with you, even to the, you know, the, the, to, to the horror of many supporters who were pulling for Trump. And uh, just, you know, what I had to say just wasn't ringing with them. And they were very concerned. And Jonathan, you, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, it caused a little ripple in the in the code community with some that were associates of mine and students and things like that. But then after the election, Right. Uh, everybody saw what happened. So it's the same kind of thing. I've essentially found some of the same kind of codes um, or even more so uh, than the last. And this is a source of, of my confidence and what I'm um, sharing with you guys. I'm not worried at all that, that y'all's going to pull a fast one, um, you know, Ruin my reputation, ruin his reputation, ruin the reputation of the of the codes and all those kind of things. There's, there's a genuine concern, right? Um, it could be catastrophic. And uh, not to give myself any kind of out or anything like that, I'm going to go forward with revealing to you these election codes. And, um, you know, I must tell you that, that entering into these searches, I, I do it unbiased. Um, I don't go in it with a predetermined notion that I want to find X, Y, and Z, and and I and I don't stop until I do. That's not how this works. Um, I don't have a dog in this race. It doesn't really matter to me what the outcome. Of, I'm concerned about what the truth is. What is the truth? And you guys have heard me teach that one of the one of the things we know and understand about the Bible codes now is that what was, what is, and what will be is there, okay? And for several years, I only focused on, with my students particularly, what was and what is. But some of you have witnessed that I've stepped a little more into what will be, which is not something, like I said, not something I was teaching to my students because I, I think a, a code surgeon has to progress to that point. You can't just jump into the deep end of the pool and then start pulling you know, codes that, that seem to be prophetic or even predictive, right? And again, this this operates like an ephod. Um, it's not a crystal ball. No, it's not a way of, of reading the future. It is a way for Yacht to communicate and to reveal things that was, that is, and that will be, okay? That's what it is. It's, it's an ephod, right? My interpretation of the letters, because that's what I'm interpreting, the letters that are revealed to me, is is outside of that room outside of you know my control right 
So the, the codes that I find, the codes that are, you know, I'm led to uh, have, have, have nothing to do with me. I didn't put them there. Um, I don't necessarily like some of the things that I'm seeing you guys. And, and I don't really like to have to report to you what I think is going to happen. And um, yeah. So I want to get some help from Perry stone. And I, I sort of believe that, that Perry's probably watching some of these videos based on some of the things I've, I've seen him said, um, especially when on the broadcast he just did a couple of days ago, where in the last part of it, he starts talking about code hidden codes in the Bible. It's part of his uh, a new DVD series he's doing or something. But this particular subject, I want to take you to, uh, you know, something he said three years ago about William Branham. And then we're going to go look at these codes, all right? This is what he said just three years ago. And by the way, I was working on some of these codes that you're going to see more than three years ago. This was right at the 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 election of Biden. And I saw Kamala and, you know, I knew Biden wasn't going to last. He's, you know, for instance, you know, when I find the Biden code that he was going to be president, I knew it was going to be one term. There's no way he was going to live to another one. So eventually Kamala, it was going to be passed to Kamala. I told you that that and it happened. Right. Why? Why? How did I know that? Well, some of these codes that I'm going to show you, I've been looking at for several years. Right. And and back in the day, I didn't genuine, I, I, you know. I didn't, you know, like put these out until after the fact because of the innate nature of, you know, these codes. Right. They're, they're predictive in nature. And so um I had to get to the point of, of being confident in what the Holy Spirit was revealing to me before, you know, I was comfortable in doing that. We're now in that season. So I got three that I'm going to share with you. We're going to look at something from Perry Stone first. And then we'll move right into those codes. So please stay tuned, you guys. Perry Stone, three years ago, talking about William Branham and what he prophesied. I have a very, very significant and very, very important video. It's not often I come to you and say two things. Number one, watch all of it because number seven, the seventh thing I will tell you on this video is probably the most significant. Number six and seven actually match. And you're going to hear something that I have taught for 20 years. As a matter of fact, when Hillary Clinton announced that she was going to run for president, I was sharing with people about the vision from 1933, asking the question, could she be the person to fulfill it? Well, she wasn't, obviously. But now, with Harris in as the vice president, then I see a great possibility of this being fulfilled. And what is odd, even the secular media has discussed this. Now, let me backtrack to the original story and the original vision. Many years ago, there was a man who was very well known that had a tremendous ministry and a tremendous gift that God had given him. I never met him personally. I do know, however, the man who's in his 80s that lives in our town that was his organ player for his crusades and evangelistic meetings. I have met numerous pastors who experienced this man's ministry and said it was the most amazing thing that they ever saw. For those who knew him personally, they loved him and they knew he was an absolute man of God who never missed his words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophecies, or if he said he had a vision. And let me reiterate this. Those who knew him say he never missed it, ever. Now, is that possible? It's possible through fasting and praying and seeking God, yes, to train your spirit to hear that way. But this was a gift from God. In the 1940s and 50s uh, and very early 60s, he had some of the most remarkable answers to prayer. He would actually pray with people on a platform, and you would see God heal the person, touch the person, deliver the person. And I don't have time to tell all the stories, but in June of 1959, he came to preach at a church here in Cleveland, Tennessee, and an angel of the Lord came to him and said, Cleveland, Tennessee will be the hub of the final end-time revival. And we've talked about that for many years here in Cleveland, and we won't go into that. Again, that's another separate message. He was a young man in his 20s in 1933 and had rented an auditorium to preach an evangelistic revival. He had just bought a 1933 Ford automobile and was on, preparing to go to the service. And when he sat in his car, he went into a complete vision. I mean, right in front of him, he saw this begin to happen. Um, this is similar to what the Bible calls in the Old Testament, where Peter went into a trance in a 
in the book of Acts there where God was informing him about Cornelius. He, after coming out of the trance and the seven part vision, he wrote it down on a yellow piece of paper and put it in his Bible with the heading, I saw the end time coming. Uh, and, and, and so this is where we get into the story. I'm going to not get into the four things that have already happened. They were, he was told in 1933, there will be three great isms, communism, fascism, and Nazism. And of course that has happened. There will be one ism at the end. And I think that's globalism. That's my personal opinion. He didn't say that, but that's my opinion. He predicted four events involving Roosevelt, Germany, Hitler, and they all. I believe one of those isms will be revealed here in just a little bit. And it starts with feminism, right? Feminism is rising. Happened. And he also predicted a world war was coming, that Mussolini would rise to power in Italy and invade Africa, which happened. Now, the information that I'm giving to you, I have a collection of books. I have every book from the evangelist of 1948 to about 1955, uh, and I don't want to name them, that came out of the great revival. They called it the healing revival that my father actually was converted to the Lord and called to preach during that time for him as well. And so this information came from real to real tapes where in the 50s and 60s, this minister uh, named William Branham would speak and he would begin to talk about this. Now, I have a very small booklet that has all the information in it. So I went to that booklet again from real to real tapes to give you the information. When he got into the fifth, sixth and seventh vision, here is what he saw. He saw what cars would look like in 1933. He saw what cars would look like prior to the return of the Lord. Just before, now these are quotes, just before that time comes, the final ism, automobiles will look like an egg. Now they were, all of them were long rectangles back then and were for many years. That's the way they will be just before the rapture. So I'm going to show you some pictures of automobiles that are in the shape of eggs. And these little, uh, it almost looks like a, a huge egg that you stand in and you move around in. And you can use this on sidewalks, for moving from one comp corporate building to the other, etc. But automobiles are in that shape. And here's the second thing you saw in automobiles, quote, it will come to pass that cars will not be run by a steering wheel. It will be something another run them, to run them. Now I'm going to, I'm quoting him. His grammar was very poor, but I'm quoting him as I'm not misquoting or, or trying to be improper in my English grammar. This is how he spoke. He's very, very simple uh, man. It will be something else that'll run them like, and I put in here, remote control. You can't hit another car because it's remote. This was 1933 before any of this stuff was developed, which was many, many years later. Uh, here's another quote from a real to real message that I have uh, in, in print. I saw a family driving an automobile that was glass top, didn't exist back then, and didn't have a steering wheel. It was controlled by some sort of radar or something. He didn't even know how it was controlled. They were playing games while it drove itself. Now, folks, listen to me. We're here. So that's what makes me believe that now what he saw with a woman becoming president could happen in the next few years with Kamala Harris, moving from vice president to president. But I want to show you the end result of what he saw when this happens. Now, he's preaching in the 1950s, telling people this. He repeated it about four times in major meetings. America will become ruled by a woman. These are the quotes. Here's a quote from Teaching on Moses, May 13, 1956. A woman will take the place of a president or of something great and high power in America. Here's a third quote. I predict before the coming of the Lord, a woman shall arise to be the leader. I saw a woman that will either be president or, or, or become some great power of some sort in the United States before, this is very interesting, the annihilation of the world. In other words, this would be, this is how I take this. This would be a sign that somewhere in the future, something is going to happen that's going to bring annihilation to the world. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Let me go back to a story. I was going to preach a message in Huntington, West Virginia, one of my big conferences called Will America have a woman president? And I received a visit from someone who was a former worker in the White House with direct connections to Bill and Hillary Clinton. This person had been there during what was called the Y2K uh, turnover with the computers and was helping with that project. She heard Hillary talk about becoming a senator in New York. She heard Hillary talk about, this is before they left the White House, the Clintons left the White House, of course, and how she wanted to be the first woman president. Well, she was interested in hearing what I was going to say. And I used these predictions to say, could it be? You see, when you don't have a clear word, and I don't have a clear word if it's Harris, I really don't. But my point is that the opportunity could be there because of Biden's health, uh, he could get sick, I don't know. Th my point of even saying that is those are possibilities. And even the secular media has said, 
He will stay in for a certain period of time. He'll step down. He's even talked about it, that if he couldn't do it, he'd just step down, you know, say he was sick. And Folks, again, this video is three years old. All right. So, so at the time of this video, Perry was speculating, but he was spot on on what was about to happen. And I, like I said, for you know, since the inception of the Biden administration, I've been looking at Kamala and I've even said it on my channel. We got to watch her because she's a she's an Obama plant. She was put there by Obama. Listen, Biden debated against Harris. They didn't like each other. But Obama has this thing over Biden, like this power over him. And he listens to him. This is his number one advisor. And this is the one speaking into his ear, <laughs> just like he's done with Kamala from somewhere else. Right. So the Biden administration, it was basically Biden 3.0 because it was basically a third term for, for Obama. Excuse me, Obama 3.0. We're going into 4.0 now. And 5.0 in the next year, because she's going to be there two terms, you guys. And I know many of you don't want to hear that, but you got to see what I have to show you in these codes and why I'm, I'm listen, if I'm wrong about this, I, I told my best friend, I'm probably hanging this up, walking away. And I've told y'all that, that if I'm wrong about this and you don't stop me and you allow me to go forward and put this stuff out there and destroy the credibility of this channel, destroy the credibility of your codes and your word, I'm done. Okay. And I'll probably do something very foolish, um, right, to ensure I'll never come back here, right? So, uh, Folks, I firmly believe what I am presenting to you, and I would not be doing this unless I did, unless I had the, the, the faith, and I believe that I hear the Ruach speaking to me and showing me these things, right? So Perry is, is another witness to this. Three years ago, he's saying this. Here we are, right? And so she then would become president. So is, would she, if she became president, be the person that this man who was a, and if I can use this, there are people that have a prophetic gift who did have a real prophetic gift who knew how to operate it correctly. Now, now again, people, I know 25 people. Folks, and let me just say this. I'm not in lockstep with William Branham's doctrines and some of his beliefs and things like that. He is a man of his time, right? But I do agree with some of the things that he has prophesied. And I do believe that Yah will use broken vessels to to bring a word okay well, that i've talked to since i was 18 who knew him personally who traveled with him he had meetings in their in, in in their churches when they were kids and they say phenomenal unbelievable to the point that people followed him he was so much like christ in his ministry that people began to build him up and he told his best friend god's going to take me because people are exalting me way too high. A man should never, ever be exalted like people are looking at me like I'm Elijah or some, you know, something like that. And the Lord allowed him, I'm not saying the Lord sent it, but he was taken in a car accident uh, and, and could have lived on me. And this is what I've warned, folks. I was warning you guys, especially the Christian nationalists and those that felt follow up the false prophets, the danger of exalting Trump and 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 essentially creating a golden calf situation with Trump. We cannot exalt a man higher than the Father, okay? He's not going to put up with it. And when I saw the false prophets doing that, I knew we had a problem in the last election, and Yah was not going to honor that. He was not. And he said, I, he told me, I will not lift one finger to stop what's going to happen. I'm going to allow it. And then he revealed to me it was going to be the shenanigans. Oh, we're going to see, we're going to see what's happening the next time. Yah has not changed his mind. I don't think so. And, and if I'm, well, I'm not going to get into that. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Let's, let's listen to the rest of what Perry Stone says about Brother Branham and what he said almost 100 years ago. It's about 80 years ago that he, that he said this in the 1930s. Many Incidentally, in the 1930s. Women had just got the right to vote. Okay. Th that came from the from the 1920s. Up until that point, they didn't have any kind of um rights, right? 
Remember women's liberation and all that that came later and feminism that came out of that? William Branham saw all this, okay? And saw what's going on in Hollywood and he and he spoke about it. And he talked about the degradation and um, the downfall of the United States because of this, okay? So this is very important, folks. We, we, we've got to understand what, what is taking place. And the years have not that had, but that's what he said himself. He saw his own death coming and predicted it. Now, here's what I want to say. Only time will tell if this is the season of 2021 to 2024 where she would step in. We do know if she does fulfill this, here's the part that really stirred me. Not the fact that she comes in and not the fact that morals fall. That's already happening and it's going to get worse. Not the fact, you know, that you see... Um, the different things happening that we who are patriotic Americans, Christians, and conservatives see. But here's the part that really, oh, all right. Um, immediately after that, after this person comes to power, who is the woman president, and again, if it's not in 2024, it will be in the future. I saw the United States as one smoldering, burnt over place, blown to bits. It will be near its end at that time. And I'm not going to read into that. I will give you one more quote. He said, I seen, and, you know, instead of saying I saw this, I seen what looked like just stumps burning, rocks blown out, and the whole United States look, just looked bare, like, like that, as far as I could see where I was standing. Now, let me suggest here, and I'm only suggesting, volcanic eruptions would do this, massive earthquakes would do this, um, as far as the burning part, gas pipes blowing things up, that's how in many areas that would happen. It also could be internal fighting, which I hope to God we never get to that, as far as violence in, in that. People can agree to disagree or have protests, you know, but not, not the violence, I uh, hope. And then, or it can be, it could actually be the invasion from another country, which is very, very possible. And uh, my father would never want me to share this uh, it, well, no, he let me share it at times uh, of something that happened to him, but I'm careful with it because there's so many skeptics when it comes to a vision or a dream or someone having a prophetic word or someone who says they've seen an angel because I know there's a lot of flakiness out there with some people. And so that's why I've never shared this because he received a very visitation in Troutman, North Carolina years ago. And, you know, maybe, maybe somewhere down the road if I get a release, I'll talk about that. So we have cars that look like eggs, driverless cars, cars that can park themselves, cars that can drive themselves. I have a vehicle that if you press a button, you can take your hands off the steering wheel and it just stays between the lines. You know, it just it's, it's it's really those that type of technology has now come is now here, and again the, the destruction could be possible. Now someone said, well, um, you know, I mean, what do you think? Um, uh, looking at looking at all of this, how do we know that's going to happen? You look at the reputation of the person saying it. Now he was a controversial person because it wasn't. He, he believed that he was, he came in the spirit of Elijah, the spirit, not Elijah, but the spirit of Elijah with that anointing. And people cut him down and criticized him. People said he was a prophet, which he actually was, to be honest with you, with these gifts. People cut him down for that. He, uh, he got into doctrine that some of the other Pentecostals totally disagreed with. They cut him down for that. And so, um, you know, you have people who think one thing about him, people that think another thing about him. I'm talking about the man that saw this, but the, the fact is the proof is in the pudding. And uh, people that I, everybody I've talked to said they've never sat under a ministry more powerful than that one. And let me just give you one story I can tell you, and then I'm going to conclude this in just a moment. In the auditorium in Chattanooga, Tennessee, a man named Larry Stevenson was a young man who went to a meeting with this man we're talking about, the minister. And uh, they brought a man and put him in the balcony that had been in a car accident that was paralyzed from his uh, waist down. This minister that had the vision uh, in 1933 was in Chattanooga preaching and stopped preaching. And he said, just a minute, there's a man up in the balcony. Uh, you can't walk from your waist down. You were in a white automobile. You're a ball player. Uh, you, are, you were in the wreck. It's left you paralyzed. They said, you'll never walk. If men will bring you down here and carry you to the platform, God's going to heal you. Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I had friends who are there. They're older ministers now. And they, two guys grabbed him and carried that man, boy, down the steps all the way to that platform. And when, he, when that man re reached his hand out and said, be healed in the name of Jesus, believe it or not, it happened. The power of God came to him, and he absolutely got 100% healed and was a pastor right up the road from here, from Cleveland, Tennessee, up in the next town until he died in his late 70s. And he was a young man, of course, back at that time. Now think about that. Well, I don't believe in all that. Well, I got news for you. It'll never happen to you. You'll never receive it. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it if you don't believe in it. It'll never happen to you. So I grew up in a culture of faith and a culture of families that believe in God's ability to do these things. Uh, I do not know what else to say to you from that other than giving you the information. And I'm still detailing some other parts to this and adding to it. And I'm, I'm working on a project right now. All right, folks, let me, let me stop it right there. He, 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 he just goes into some other things here, but I, I want to take you to actual 
William Brandt's voice. Um, there, there are recordings of him that you can find on YouTube. Um, I'm, I'm just going to play a little part of, of what he actually said about a woman president. And again, you got to understand the time that this man came up. Your, your very own family members were probably just like William Branham and his thought process of, about women, what their place, you know, he was, he was, he was probably what they call a chauvinistic person, right? Uh, uh, right. So he believed the woman's place was at home with the children and yada, 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 and not in the public, you know, business and especially in Hollywood and, and in porn and all that kind of stuff. He saw that as a degradation that was happening through the woman okay so remember the man is dated in the time he if, if he lived now they'd crucify him right so all right so i want to take you uh to william bram and i think he, this is in the 1950s when he said this to this group but the original prophecy comes from uh the 1930s Arm women. I don't mean you Christian women, but just to see women coming into politics and everything, it's a disgrace. It's a breaking of the American morale. Amen. And remember, this is America will uh, a woman, I, I better leave it alone. But just remember this. I predict this, that a woman will be president before we're annihilated. That's right. I said that in 1933 by vision. Sure, it's a woman's world. Where to start from? Hollywood. All your dirty, filthy dressing and things. That's what's crept into her homes and things like that. Now it comes through television. Everything else is a disgrace. Yeah. <laughs> I predicted that women would keep demoralizing and the nation would keep falling and they keep hanging to mother or black mother like that so they become a woman, become an idol. And after a while, that America would be ruled by a woman. Mark and six, not right. A woman will take the place of a president or something of great, some high power in America. When I say this with respect, ladies, when a woman gets out of the kitchen, she's out of her place. Women given the right to vote, elected President elect Kennedy, the woman's vote. The wrong man, which will finally lead to full control of the Catholic Church in the United States, then the bomb comes that explodes her. There are seven things predicted, and five of them has already happened. Amen. Amen. So you can judge yourself how far away we are. Now I said, remember, in that day, before the end time comes, before the end time comes, that a woman. Now, you all keep this rule down. There will be a great, powerful woman raised up either to be president or dictator or some great, powerful woman in this United States. And she'll sink under the influence of women. Now, uh, you remember that, thus saith the law. He gives seven things. In 1933, what happened? And now every one of them has come to pass for two things. Amen. Perfectly. Just exactly how it even Amen. President Kennedy would be taken in. Right here on my books right now. Amen. Told... 33 years ago. Amen. Exactly. We'll have one president one of these days. Look like it happened right now. Amen. Actually, she is president. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Anyway, that's William Branham. Uh, he, he he said that a woman would, would take the presidency. And right after that, uh, I think he says it a little, little later here, right after that, nuclear war. Right? even had a vision of it i believe from from what he said he's standing on the ground so it's very localized but he made it seem like the whole united states is annihilated i don't believe that's the case folks but from what yah has shown me it's very localized and it's and it's uh, it's well it could be two things it could be mida connected mida or it could be a judgment of iniquity where we will have multiple strikes if it's mida connected mida there's two nuclear strikes in the United States, all right? Let me just take you to Kamala now, right? Sinks under the influence of women. Now, now I want you to see this. She just did this a couple of days ago, maybe, where she is at a campaign in Wisconsin, and there's a lot of women there. And the subject matter that she's talking about is abortion. And somebody yells out, from the back, because there's protesters in the back. Jesus is Lord. And she says, oh, you're at the wrong rally. And she mocks Yah. 
Shimachia, right? So just like the tables I've shown you before with the sons of Balau, uh, right, and the connection to Hinduism and Pravati and, uh, you know, the, the goddess of destruction manifested right in front of you, right here. Watch. Because ours is a fight for the future and it is a fight for freedom. She's talking about abortion, folks. For freedom. Like the fundamental freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government tell her what to do. And again, we're not going to be gaslighted on this. We remember Donald Trump hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with, with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade, and they did as he intended. <laughs> oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. Listen to the crowd roar. And it sounds like a very female-dominated crowd. This is women screaming. No, I think you meant to go to the smaller one down the street. Yeah, so I know that's inflamed several of you. It, it inflamed me when I saw it. Um, but the fact of the matter is, what Yah has got encoded and what his plans are, who can know the heart of Yah, right? Everything he does, he has a plan. Whether it's good or it's bad, he has a plan. Um, I know this from, from looking at the codes and knowing my scripture, that um, judgment comes to the wicked, right? And this country has done wicked things. Our leaders are very wicked. And that's where the Bible says the judgment comes, there and the house, the house of, of God, the church, right? Comes to the house of God first. So that's why I believe that Yah's doing something in this. Because it does look glim, uh, 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 glum, or glib you know bad for kamala right now suppose if, if we're to believe that your vote matters right but when we see what happens people are going to scratch their head and they're going to wonder why why did this thing happen right here's the bottom line folks the very bottom line if donald trump is allowed to be the next president y'all puts him in here because that's who does it in the first place y'all Yah is the one, not not your vote. If he allows him in there, it's for four years. And judgment still comes. Right? So you need to understand that. Now I'm saying this because in, in the past week I've been working on these codes. I've been talking with one of my best friends and he's not happy with me right now and what I've been looking at as if... <laughs> You know, I put these codes there and that's, and I'm biased or whatever. Um, it's not, it's not like that. And uh, he, he, he thinks that I'm not looking hard enough. Right. Now we'll say this. There are some that say that there, there are codes about Donald Trump's second return in the Peshitta, which I don't have access to. So I will say that, but the text that I do have access to, to especially the one that predicted his first presidency there's no indication that he's coming back, okay? And so I'm putting that out there. Now, if y'all changes his mind, and I have to, you know, because of my best friend, he said, Jonathan, you got to give him hope. You got to give him some kind of hope. And so I acknowledge that. I acknowledge that. Here's the bottom line. If you see Donald Trump elected, that means we've got a four-year reprieve. That's what it means. 
That doesn't mean he's going to save this nation and the, and the golden age is back and everything's going to turn around. That's not what he's doing. That's not what he did with the first time he was here. Y'all was delaying his judgment. Okay. To be quite honest with you and what my, my intuition tells me, what my, my gut is telling me, what I hear from the Holy Spirit is America's time's up and Yah is about to judge. Okay. The threshing floor is here for the nation. It's, it is not to annihilate the nation. It's to purify it. Okay. We all go through purification, whether it's the threshing floor or it's the furnace of affliction. By the way, I'm in there right now. I got haters out there slandering me, defaming me, saying all kinds of horrible things. And, and it's and it comes it comes from a spiritual place, folks, because of the message Yah's given me. They're going to be those that throw stones at those that the enemy works through to destroy that message and destroy the reputation. Not going to happen. I will overcome that. Y'all's already shown me the victory. And some of you are going to regret some of the things that you said and, and you, you did to me. But this nation will come under judgment. Starting with the churches, and then it's moving to the government. And the people, well, the people have to go through some hard stuff. This We see this with the, with the exodus of, of uh, the Hebrews in Egypt. The Hebrews went through the first plagues, and then Yah delivered them out of there. He had to let them go through some distress to get them to want to move. This nation is not going to move when they think everything is rosy. When it's not, it's not, folks. Things are bad in this country. And Donald Trump is not going to save this nation. Only Yah can save this nation. Yeshua is the only one we can call him, okay? We can't put Donald Trump above our creator. He's not going to honor that. So I reserve the right to be wrong. And what I'm about to show you, is the reason why I believe that what I'm telling you is right. Okay, so let's go look at these codes. Very first one, election 2024. Election 2024, encoded. Very small skip, less than 5,000, 4,023 is, is, the, is the width of the cylinder. Okay, now... <clears throat> Election 2024, we should expect to see the two candidates that are in this election, correct, right? You would expect to see that. Here's one of the reasons why I believe that I'm right about this in my interpretation of what I'm seeing in this EFOD code, okay, is, is what I see here. Donald Trump's name does not appear nowhere in here. No version of it. So he doesn't even show up in this table. But the ones that do, the ones that do, like Biden, Biden's right here. Bet yo yo dollar noon, Biden is right here. Obama's name, Obama's name is here in the brown. Aleph vet, uh, Aleph va bet mem uh, hey. And also down here, Aleph va bet mem hey. Why is he here? Well, because he controls Biden and Kamala. Kamala's name, also here, twice, same skip pattern. Kamala, starting with this letter here, running down this way is Kamala. And then going in the opposite direction, same skip, same exact skip, Kamala, going in the other way. So she's coming and going in this table here. Trump does not appear anywhere. And the only time the word the president appears in this matrix is right here, right at the first letter of Kamala's name, the president. So election 2024, the president, Kamala, is there. We've also, in the same skip pattern, even though it's 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 less letters in between, 
um, this this number is divisible by the other number. The other number is divisible by that. In, in other words, uh, same skip pattern. It can be reduced to this number here. So abortion, the president and Kamala all all in line there. Okay, war three times. Melchema in English. Melchema. Melchema, and also here indicating, I believe, World War Three. We've got the United States. Bet, Aleph, Resh, Hey, Bet is the United States there. And remember where, where Obama is. We've also got this anomaly here that's kind of stacked. And I found an extension on uh, this phrase here, but I, I don't want to say this. I want to take you to the, to the translator and type this in and you read it. Because if I say it, this video is going to get dinged. Okay, so we're going to do that. It, the, the letters are noon, gimel, noon, bet. Noon, gimel, noon, bet. Hang tight. Noon, gimel, noon, bet. Election 2024, past tense, past tense, okay, back to the code, so that's where it says that, now the extension there is it was difficult, so it was whatever, and it was difficult, not saying it's not going to happen, it indicates that it is very plausible that it's going to happen. Um, we also have the date, Atov Shin Pei Hei, which is uh, 2024. 2025 is also here as well. And um, yeah, it doesn't look good. Some of these, some of these verses, let's look at this. It's also got abortion encoded right here where the mem is in Kamala's name. Let's go look at that before we move on to the next code. I just want to point out some of these verses and what's taking place here. This is Micah, Prophet Micah, chapter 4, so it's, it's basically talking about the woman in travail, right? And it says, um, and thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee it shall come. Uh, shall it come even the first dominion the kingdom shall come together to the daughter of jerusalem and now why dost thou cry aloud is no king is there no king in thee is thy counselor perish for the pains of have taken thee as a woman in travail be in pain and labor and bring forth O daughter of zion, zion like a woman in travail for now shall thou go forth out of the city and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt even go into Babylon, where there shall be, uh, there where there where thou be delivered, and there Yah shall redeem thee from the land of thy from the hand of thine enemies. Yeah. Then we got Yom Yehovah right here, which is basically in English the day of the Lord. It's the great and terrible day, right? Uh, here. We are in Zephaniah by this, and I've I, I just kind of marked it for myself to go back and see. This is uh, Zephaniah 1, 5. And them that worship the host of heaven upon their housetop, and them that worship and swear by Yah, and swear by the name Malcham, and them that are turned back from Yah, and those that have not sought you nor inquired of him, hold thy peace at the presence of, of Yah Elohim, for the day of Yah is at hand. The same, it's the same word here, right? For Yah has prepared a sacrifice and hid uh, his guest. And it shall come to pass in that day of Yah's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and such that are clothed in strange apparel. And in the same day, I will also punish those that leap on the threshold, which fill their master's house with violence and deceit, right? Um, and then uh, let's let's go here to Haggai. 
the prophet Haggai and see what he says here. Two and six. You know, it's really interesting to me because one of the things, one of the key trigger words that we see the prophets, the false prophets saying right now is, yeah, a great shaking is coming that Yah is going to shake this nation and Donald Trump's going to be president again and stuff, right? Yet there's going to be a shaking, but Yah says, um, for thus sit the, the at uh, Yahuwah Zavahot, yet once it is a little while and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea, and the dry land, and I will shake all the nations, and desire the nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, says Yehoah Zavot. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith Yehoah Zavot, and the glory of the latter house should be greater than the former, saith Yah. And in his place I will give you peace, saith Yah. Right? So there are promises he, that he gives us after the destruction, after his judgment, that he's bringing us peace. Okay? So this, this is not just all bad news, folks. He is doing something here. He has to thrust this nation. All right. So that is election 2024. Again, Donald Trump's name does not even appear here. And I didn't even go to these, these verses. I probably should do that. Let's just go there before I, I had a mark here. This is um, the book of Zechariah right here. 14th chapter, very interesting place because this is where Yah comes down on the Mount of Olives. Chapter 14, verse 1, Behold, the day of Yah cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided, divided in the midst of thee, for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to the battle, and the city shall be taken, the house wife of the women ravaged. Half the city shall go forth into captivity, the residue of thy people shall not yeah, be cut from it. Right. So we see in verse 4, and his feet shall stand on that day on the Mount of Olives which is before Jerusalem on the east, and cleave in the midst, therefore. The, the mountain is going to split in two at, at the feet of Yah. And and by the way, that's yod heh vav -Hey. It doesn't say, it doesn't say uh, Yeshua does that. And I'm, I know that uh, Christian pastors have taught for years that this is Yeshua that comes on the Mount of Olives. It's not. It's actually yod heh vav -Hey. All right. All right. So that that's uh, this one. Let's move on to... The next one I got for you guys. This one is called woman president. Or first woman president. It's encoded several times. This particular one is at a skip of one, 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 one. 11, 11. Woman president is the access term. And... Three times we have the president, the president, and president, uh, all in close proximity to this. We've also got America under judgment. <laughs> also the name Kamala here, not Hillary Clinton, Kamala, right? And the, the first in the end of days. We also see a date, Tav Shin Pei Va. That's 2025. That's when the inauguration takes place. It's in reverse in the plain text. We've also got a, a, a you know, Tav Shin Pei Va here. But also Tav Shin Pei Hey, which is the year 2024. So 2024, 2024 and 2025 are here. But here's the thing. So is 2028. And so here's what I'm telling you. She's got two terms. And that's going to be 2024 and 2028. And if it's not that, it's going to be 2028 and the next one. All right. So at some point, <coughs> she will be the first woman president. And it's a Lilith, Lilith spirit. Lilith is the spirit of Jezebel, by the way. Jezebel on this side. The rise of Jezebel, who is the spirit of Lilith. All right. First woman president will be come up. All right. Let's go to the next code, folks, which um, this one, you know, might infuriate you a little bit. 
By the way, I found the same kind of thing with Donald Trump, found the same kind of thing with Biden. And here it is again with Kamala. And that word is Mashiach. You see there in the, in the black, Kamala Mashiach. Now, let me just describe, uh, under, so you understand this Hebrew word. This is not just talking about the Messiah, Yeshua. Mashiach is a general Hebrew word. It means anointed one, somebody who is anointed. And it can be a wicked person, and it can be a righteous person. I'll give you an example. Cyrus was called an anointed one, Mashiach. Hezekiah was called a Mashiach. Nebuchadnezzar was called a Mashiach, right? And they were all wicked. <laughs> Okay, so th this is not just about Yeshua, that word. You see it right here as well. Mashiach of Yahuwah. Mim Shen yod -hit. yod -hit -bob -hit. The Mashiach of Yahuwah. And you have Kamala is anointed. Vertical on that, in the blue there, we, we see the word, the cities. Now, I don't know what this means. I just read it in, in the text that, that was right here, but we also see it vertical. And I think this is the... The cities that, that vote. Bet, uh, bet Aleph Resh uh, Hey Bet, the United States. We've got Obama here. Now, this is interesting. Obama, America, and the uh, the time of distress, all in the same skip pattern. Meaning they're divisible from one another. Numbers the same, right? All the same. We've got president here twice, Nasi, and going in this direction, starting at the noon, going this way, and then Nasi going from this, this, not Nazi, I'm not talking about a Nazi like Nazi Germany, this is Nasi, in Hebrew means president, okay? We also have, in the plain text, running in the opposite direction, now this doesn't appear in the, in the text normally. But if you start reading from the noon, the bet, the rash, and the hay, it says selected. And so Kamala, anointed, selected. We also got the year, 2025. Hey, top, shin, pay, vav. And you see that word again, just like in the last video uh, uh, table. Judgment is connected to the year or the country. Judgment is coming to this country, folks. Whether you want to believe that or not. Now, I have to tell you the truth. The election right here. Uh, the nations in the plain text there. And then uh, we we do have the end of days and the end of days in, in uh, this table here. So I want to start with this verse here that runs through, right through the where the Mashiach and Kamala uh, actually ends. Let's read that. And then we're going to wrap this up, you, you guys. That is Jeremiah 22. And let's go in and see what's going on there. Go up to verse 6. For thus saith Yah unto the king's house of Judah, thou art Gilead unto me, and the head of Lebanon, yet I surely will make thee a wilderness, and the cities are not inhabited. And I will pray destroyers against thee and every one with its weapons, and they shall cut down thy choice cedars and cast them into the fire. And many nations will pass by this city, and they shall say every man to his neighbor, Wherefore hath Yah done this to this great city? Remember the cities and the cities. And then they will answer, Because they have forsaken the covenant of Yah, their Elohim, and worshiped other gods and served them. Weep not for the dead, neither bemoan him, but weep sore for him that goeth away. For he shall not return no more, nor see his native country. That's judgment, folks. That's y'all bringing judgment. And there's a parallel to what we see in the United States and what we see happening here. Let's go up there to Second Kings. What's going on up there? I forgot what I had. Also in chapter 22. Right? You see that? This was chapter 22. So was this. Chapter 22 of 2 Kings, verse 17. Because they have forsaken me, and they have often offered unto other gods, that they might provoke me with the work of their hands, 
Therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place. It shall not be quenched. It shall not be quenched, folks. His wrath is kindled against this place. Okay. Let's go right here to where it says the end of days. This is an also in Jeremiah chapter 30. But let's go in and read what chapter 30 says. Right. And I think you'll see something because this is the word used for the great tribulation. For lo, the days come, saith Yah, that I will bring, bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, two different ones, saith Yah, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave their father, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that Yah spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah, for this saith Yah, we've heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail, travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loin as a woman in travail? Where do we see that? And all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great, so there's none like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he, meaning Jacob, meaning you and me, if Father Abraham had many sons, many sons, right? That's the line of Jacob. That's you. That's me. The time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. So don't fear, okay? It has to be done. It shall come to pass in that day, saith Yah, Zavaot, that I will break his yoke off thy neck, and I will burst thy bonds, and a stranger shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve Yah, their Elohim. And David, their king, will I rise up for them. Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, you, saith Yah, neither be dismayed, O Israel, you. For lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return and shall be in rest. Okay, so we need to understand who Jacob is. And who we are. We are of the seed of Jacob. So if Yah is talking to Jacob, he's talking to you. You follow how this works? Father Abraham had many sons. And many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them. And so are you. Jacob is your father. Abraham is your father. You are the many sons and many daughters. Right? So when he says... The time of Jacob's trouble, he's talking to you and me in the end times, the seed of Jacob. That's why these things are happening. The threshing, it's all promised in his word, folks. And I wouldn't be telling you if I didn't believe it, if I didn't read it and believe it. This is going to happen. Whether it's in 2024 or 2028, Kamala Harris is going to be the first woman president. And you heard it here first. I didn't BS you. I didn't beat around the bush. I didn't do it for views. I, went, I didn't get paid a dime to tell you what I just told you. I do have people that donate and help this ministry. But it's I can count on one hand who those people are. Don't, don't be a Johnny come lately and be like, oh, Jonathan, we always supported you. I know who you are. That happened the last time, by the way, when, when I was right about the election, all the people came out of the woodwork. Oh, Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan. I know who you are. And I know who my friends are. And I know who my enemies are. And by the way, I'm being slandered and defamed to no end for three years, re relentlessly and brutally. Redemption's coming. And some people are going to pay for the things they did and said. 
and try to destroy me and my voice, my reputation, you're going to be dealt with. I, will, I trust in the Father and, and his provision. Psalm 91, one of my favorite songs. Let me play that for you. Can I do that? I want to encourage you right now. One of my favorite Psalms in all of the Bible. I just played this to my class yesterday because I, I realize there are people out there that are struggling to understand that God, Yah, has not forgotten you. He's not forgotten you. And he's not going to let anything happen to you. This is a promise that he gave David. Concerning his 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 people. Oh, it's a beautiful song. One of my favorite songs, folks. One I cling to because I've seen every word to be true. God's protected me in every part of my life. He's not let any harm happen to me. He's not let my enemies overtake me. Hear what I'm telling you. You're not going to destroy me. You in Arizona and you in Hawaii. Y'all controls what's going on. He's protecting his servants. Psalm 91. Listen to the words, because this applies to you as well. Even in the time we're in... He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my God and my shield in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence as well. He will cover over you with his feathers, and there under his wings you will find peace and his face. Does 
disaster will come there near your home. He commands his angels concerning you to guard you. Strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, and trample upon the serpent's head. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, and trample upon. He loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he knows my name. He will call on me, and I will answer. I will be with him always, and I will honor him. And with the Lord. Satisfy him with long life, with long, long, long life. I will show him my salvation with long, long eternal life. I will satisfy. All right, you guys, one more song, and then we're closing it out for the day. Why well, this one encourage you? Because this is basically the prayer. Even though David wrote it, this was the prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, uh, in all, all the books of Habakkuk, what he was seeing going on and, and what he was saying to Yah. <laughs>
Shine for Shine for Take heed, you senseless ones, you fools, and